Okay, well here we are. We got our location. That's a really, really nice one. Unfortunately, the glare of the sun is just creating havoc on the the lens for the uh, Sony. Makes it really hard to see, so I'm just kind of going to have to wing it here. Oh, right, look at that. Uh, off in the distance there, I know the GoPro probably can't see it. But where that big bank of clouds is at, in the valley there, that's where I live. It's probably foggy down there. You see the homestead streak down there? The old house, got a beautiful shot of it here. And now those four pictures I was talking about are right here. I was showing them on the, on the computer on the last set of videos, last videos. And the highway's kind of there, but it's a dirt road. There was a huge structure over there, which was Peter Britt's wine house type thing. The only thing that remains of that is the basement, which you can actually go over there and check that out. I've got pictures of that from uh, years ago that I took with my first digital camera. It's really cool. And uh, so you can actually see the basement parts of it. So I'll have to share those. And then up on the hill was Peter Britt's house, which of course is no longer there. It caught fire and burned down in 1960. The only things left there is the foundation of that. The Peter Britt Pavilion is up there where they hold all those shows during the summer. So down here was the creek was there. And some of the pictures, it doesn't appear to be there. It's probably been moved several times. We had railroad tracks running up here, which went all the way up here, three miles up into the mountains. I followed those railroad tracks to where they ended uh, several years ago. Uh, you can check those videos out. They're amongst the abandoned gold mine videos. I think you got to look for that playlist and they're in there. So the tracks are visible in these photos that I'm going to try to duplicate here. But uh, everything changes. It's uh, uh, the photos. They're different years. I don't know what years they are, but uh, it just shows this area. Some of them are really old. Some of them are a little newer. Uh, one house is going to appear. It's still there today. I can just barely see it through the trees. Unfortunately, it's going to be really hard to to pick that one out in the when I put this series together. There's my house down there, the house I grew up in. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do here is I need to pan, just slowly pan here, and then all the way zoomed out. Then I need to zoom in a little bit, pan it again, and then just keep doing that three, four, or five times. The mountains in the back are going to be really important to catch. Although in one or two of the photos, they don't appear because they're zoomed in somewhat or whatever. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get some shots here. It's going to take a little time to get these. Alrighty, I guess I'm done. I got what I need, I think. I'm not really sure. so hard to tell. I just can't hardly see through the viewfinder. This is the, the way the sun is glaring on it. So, need to pack up, head back up the hill to the truck, and then we'll try to decide where I'm going to go from there. Well, it's such a beautiful day out here. I just hate to leave. I really do. I really do, but it's been a pretty long day at work, and Need to go get some lunch here pretty soon. All right, well, let's head back up to the truck. All righty, that was fun. Got the shots I wanted, I think. Very difficult when you can't see through the viewfinder. You just, you see enough just to, anyway, I don't know really how to fix that. I would think it would, wouldn't be a problem. If the sun's over there and the viewfinder's facing this way. I, I don't know, I've never really ran across that problem before. So, still way early. So let's head. 
let's head up to South Oregon Street where the second home that I lived in is at. And, uh, get a picture of that. I found one picture of that uh, the other day in the family pictures and it's a close-up of my little brother standing on the porch and uh, mom, I assume, is taking a picture of him. So, uh, Um, so it's I of course it's a private residence now and I'm going to have to try to get a zoom in shot but I can do it with this Nikon Coolpix this will zoom in um, problem is I'm trying to take pictures at a private residence and sometimes people don't really like that too much <clears throat> so I need to make it really quick and not be really obvious about it. I only need one, one picture of the house and then one close up of the porch where my brother was at. <clears throat> and that'll do it for that one. Now the issue is going to be trying to find parking around there. Because it is a residential neighborhood. And uh, it's going to be kind of tough to, to find that parking spots. this is a parking zone or not. I don't know what this sign right in front of me says. I'm going to run and get this picture really quick before I get a huge ticket. Son of a gun. Son of a gun. It's frustrating. <laughs> okay, I just lost my batteries. Oh, yay. some batteries in this and quickly there's a sign facing the other way right down here you know, right by this fire plug but I don't know what it says but just jump out and grab this picture really quick I'll be happy give me just a few minutes <laughs> well, that sign straight ahead right there by the fire plug does indeed say no parking. So I need to get my hind end out of here soon. I do get in trouble, but and I'm parked on the wrong side of the street. So all kinds of fun and games could be happening here. All right. Well, the shot I got, the porch is pretty much hidden, very hard to see. 